Italian cooking in association with Simply Good Food TV, where today we are going to make pesto bread. Yep, that's right. We are going to combine two of my favorites, and I'm sure many of your favorites as well, bread and pesto. And it is as good as it sounds. With this bread, when you're baking it, you get that combined smell. Nothing better. Nothing better than the smell of bread in the oven except when you've got it mixed with a little bit of pesto. When I make this bread, I just use a store-bought pesto, uh, but it's really amazing that the color and the flavor, the smell of the pesto does survive the baking process. Now, I have made this bread on several occasions, and I can tell you from my experience, it's gonna be a surefire hit with anyone that you make this bread for and that will give it a try. And in addition to being a, a bread that you can eat just right out of the oven, this would also make a, a great toast or a great charred bread that you could use with a bruschetta or with any other number of uh, recipes. Most importantly, pane al pesto or pesto bread is incredibly easy to make. It doesn't take a poolish or a baiga or a multi-day starter. It just takes flour, water, some instant yeast, and a few other ingredients. So let's get started by taking a look at our ingredients. So let's look at our ingredients for our pesto bread or pane al pesto. First thing we have is three quarter cups of unbleached all purpose flour. Really import important that you find the unbleached flour. Uh, bleached flour, it just makes for a softer bread. That bleaching process is just, just wrecks the glutens and everything in the breads. So we're gonna use a half a cup of pesto. Now you can make your pesto on your own. I'm using a, uh, a jarred pesto, a store bought pesto. And I like, for this recipe, I like a good dry pesto. You don't want one that's like overly oily um, because we're gonna be adding some olive oil. There's two tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of salt, one packet of the instant yeast, um, or the rapid rise yeast. Uh, I like to use for my breads that I don't have a baga for or you know, a, a, an overnight starter, I like to use an instant yeast. For our water, we are going to use one cup plus two tablespoons of warm water. Should be about 105 degrees or so. If it feels just warm on the back of your hand, that's about perfect. Now I've already put some yeast here in my water. You can see that it's foamy. I put it in there about 10 minutes ago. That's really what you're supposed to do. Give your yeast 10 minutes, your instant yeast that is, 10 minutes to go ahead and bloom. You can see my water's getting cloudy. It's about ready. First thing I want to do though, and this is just something I do. You don't really necessarily need to do this, but I like to make sure my salt gets mixed throughout my flour and out through the dough, um, you know, kind of equally. So what I like to do is just kind of mix my salt in to my flour just real quick. You don't have to be crazy with it, whisk it or whatnot. Um, I just like to do that just because that's what I do. Now let's get started. This is an easy, easy bread. If you don't have a KitchenAid mixer, you can use a bowl, you can use your hands to do this. I like to do a little bit of both. I'm gonna start with my paddle. We'll just go ahead and turn that on. We're gonna come in with our olive oil. And again, this is uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. Then we're gonna put in our pesto. And this is just a half a cup, a generous half cup of a store-bought pesto. I'm gonna turn my mixer up just a little bit. You can see that's pretty much incorporated. Now we're gonna come in with the flour. We want to, I'm gonna turn this back down. Woo, went the wrong way. That could have gotten messy. So what we're gonna do is just slowly, slowly, slowly come in with our flour. And we're gonna let this paddle do its work before we switch to the dough hook. Go ahead and just dump the rest of this in there, see if I can do this without making too much of a mess. Boom, look at that. Got all the flour in it. It's excited, can you tell? I love making bread. Mainly because I used to stink at it. All right, my paddle's done its job. Woo, I gotta remember, it's this way. That could've got bad. All right, so my paddle's done its job. So what I'm gonna do is scrape my bread off of my paddle, and then we're gonna go to the dough hook. Gonna lock this in. Gonna start on medium with the dough hook. Because really I want this to get to be a ball. And we're looking for not a wet consistency on our dough, 
but not an overly dry as well. Now I'm just kind of feeling my dough because you want it to be not really sticky. Maybe have a slight stick, just a barely any stickiness to it, but you definitely don't want it to be wet. And I'm gonna tell you what, that feels just about right. I'm gonna finish this kneading by hand. Um, I don't, for this particular dough, I don't really like to let my, my uh, mixer do the kneading for me. Besides, kneading's part of the fun. And it's something, again, I enjoy making bread. I enjoy this process. Um, and it's the entire process from kneading to the waiting to the anticipation when it's in the oven. Now, you can just smush this bread around. You can just knead it however you want. You know, I wanted to make sure I was kneading my bread right. So I got online and I did some research because I, you know, I'm, I'm learning. I want to learn how to do this right. The way most people will knead their bread online is they will push away, pull back, push away, pull back. You can see I'm kind of just folding it over itself and whatnot. You do not need the, you do not need to need overly knead this bread or knead it a lot. Now, what we're going to do for this bread is I'm going to take my bowl, put in just a tiny, tiny little bit of olive oil here, just because I don't want this dough to stick. So we'll take this. I'm just going to take a paper towel and just kind of rub my oil around and set that off the side. Dough goes in my bowl. We are going to cover this completely. We don't want any of the moisture to escape. We're gonna set this in a nice warm spot in your kitchen for an hour and 15 minutes. That's our first rise. Our pesto bread has doubled in size. It's done with its first rise. Now, I did have to let this go more than an hour. Um, we keep our house a little bit on the cool side. Uh, if you do that, your bread is not going to rise as quickly. So we're going to lay down a little bit of flour. We're not going to overwork this, this dough for its second rise, but lay down a little flour so it doesn't stick. That out of the way. Let's get our loaf out. I'm not going to punch it, worry about punching it down because I'm just going to cut it. Now, I just got a, a dough cutter. If you don't have a dough cutter, you could use a knife. There you go, flinging dough. That's pretty cool, huh? Um, push that out of the way. Now, what we want to do... Again, we don't want to work overwork this dough. I'm just kind of taking it and I'm turning it under itself. And it's not going to work for me. Let's get a little bit of flour on it here. So I'm just going to keep turning it under itself. And what we're going to see after a little bit is we're going to have a nice smooth top. Let me zoom in on this real quick. You'll see that the top of my bread is real smooth. More or less what I've done is I've stretched the glutens. So, we're gonna take this, put a little bit of flour. I love this pop-up parchment paper. It makes it so easy. We're gonna put that loaf right here on top of a little bit of flour. Let's get this second loaf ready to go. Kind of punch it down there a little bit. And just keep turning it under itself until we again, again have a nice smooth loaf, kind of shape it in. There we go. I'm gonna put it just like that, separate these a little bit. My goal is to let those double in size. What I like to do on my second rise to make sure my loaves rise like I like to see them is I'll take a wet towel. I've got a really thin towel and I'll heat it up. I'll run that hot water over it, wring it out real good and I'll cover up these loaves. I will come back probably every 15 minutes or so and heat this back up and recover them. Wring it out as good as I can because I want to keep these loaves nice and, and warm. It helps that yeast grow because it's got moisture and warmth, two things that yeast love. The second rise is going to go for about an hour. Now let's talk about our oven. We need to let our oven heat up. We want it to be good and thoroughly hot. So about halfway through this second rise, I'm going to turn my oven on. To I'm going to grab my other camera here, my little GoPro, because I want to show you how I set up my oven. I think it's important to go over that. So I'm going to walk over here to my oven real quickly. Let's open the bottom one here. You can see here in my bottom oven, what I have is I have a baking stone. Now you don't necessarily need a baking stone, but it holds heat. Uh, very well. Uh, it, it really heats the uh, loaves evenly. 
So I've got that pretty much as low as it's going to go above my very bottom rack. Now you'll see over here I have just a, a, a small quarter size sheet pan. The reason I have that there is because I'm going to, uh, in the first 10 minutes that the uh, bread is baking, I'm going to put some water over here. Like I have to have water and quickly close my oven door. Now the reason I do that, the, the reason I have that second pan then is really to create steam. You need, you need moisture, you need steam in your oven to create a great crust. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run some hot water over my towel, cover up my loaves, and allow them to rise for an hour. So we'll see you in about 60 minutes. Our pesto bread is done rising. Uh, it has been a little bit over an hour. It just wasn't rising the way I wanted. It's still, it's still not quite doubled in size. Now these are still pretty decent size though, so we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the oven. They're gonna puff up a little bit more in the oven. First thing we wanna do is score these uh, loaves. And we're gonna do this with a big ax. You can either use a real sharp knife or a razor blade. We're gonna go pretty deep on these. Because they've been rising for a while, I wanna make sure if there's any gas trapped in there that it can escape through our big X, and this big X will allow that yeast, or the yeast, my gosh. It'll allow the dough to rise as well. A little bit more, allow it to expand in the oven. Now, our oven is preheated to 400 degrees. We're gonna set these on the baking stone, and then we're gonna pour a half a cup of water down into that quarter baking sheet that I had below. Now, I am gonna get, I'm gonna get my GoPro uh, camera on real quick, and we're gonna throw these in the oven. It's time to throw these loaves in the oven. Loaf number one. Plop that one on our baking stone. Loaf number two. We're gonna get this one on our baking stone as well. Now, we're going to take our water, dump that on the pan. You'll hear it crack and popple. Got the loaves in the oven. Now in five minutes, I am going to put another half cup of water down on that uh, baking sheet to create some more steam. That steam sets the crust. So the total baking time on this bread is gonna be about 35, 40 minutes. We're just gonna keep an eye on it. When that crust gets the color we want, then we're gonna pull it out. It's time to get our pesto bread out of the oven. The house smells amazing. Let me grab it real quick. There's one of our loaves. I'm gonna slide that parchment paper out of the way. And there is our other loaf. They can get real big. I was really kind of hoping they'd puff up, but you know, sometimes the loaves just don't turn out like you want them to. But I'm going to tell you what. Ooh, those smell good. We're going to let this cool for just a few minutes. Then we're going to give it a taste. See how it turned out. Now the pesto bread has been cooling. Still a little warm, but I can't wait. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of the heel there. You can see. Nice green bread. Probably should have let it cool all the way. I'm gonna let my knife do all the work here through this. Mm, gosh, the smell. You know, baking bread smells uh, amazing enough. Then you put in some pesto. Ooh, oh my gosh. All right, let's put a little butter on this just because butter makes everything better. A nice smear of butter. Let's give this pesto bread a try. Man, the, mm, just the smell of the pesto. Oh my gosh. A very light crust. Mmm, it's good. Mmm, my gosh. It's really good. Definitely one, you know, as you're learning to make bread, this is one you want to give a try. If you're like me, you know, you want to start on the traditional white breads. Great idea. Um, but when you get to the point where you're like, gee, I want to try something different. Make this pesto bread. Whoever thought this up to put pesto in bread, God love you. Now with that, thank you so much for watching POV Italian Cooking. Please, please, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+. Most importantly, click that subscribe button in YouTube and download that Simply Good Food TV app where you can see all the episodes of POV Italian Cooking and uh, some great shows from other chefs. Thank you so much for watching.